Hello, this is Jeremy, and in today's video, we're going to go through how to use all the stuff we've been learning about first and second derivatives and graphs to get really good graphs of functions. Now, I'm only going to go through one example because it gets pretty repetitive, and it's really something you have to practice. And, you know, there isn't something where one example is going to show you everything, but at the same time, multiple examples won't show you anything new. In other words, there's just a lot of uh, getting used to it that you have to draw these yourself a little bit. But I did want to go through one to show you how once we get all this information, how we can approach putting it together. And I'm not going to go through how to get all this information because this is stuff that we've gone through in the past few sections. So, all right, I have this function f and I have a description for it, the domain, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, a couple of limits. I have a sign chart for f prime, a sign chart for f double prime, and I even have a table of values. And what I want to do again is get a really nice sketch of a graph for this function. You know, the first thing that I do when I come across this information is I go ahead and plot points. And as you can see, I have a lot of plot, uh, points I could plot. For example, the x-intercepts. I'm going to treat each of these as 1. So this would be minus 1, minus 2, etc. Because this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. So the x-intercepts minus 2, okay. Positive 2 and the uh, x-intercept of 0, which is also our y-intercept. And if I go down here to the table values, I see I got the point minus 1, 2, and I got the point 1, minus 2. Now, before I just start trying to draw a graph on this, I want to look at what other information I have and kind of set it up. I think the next best thing to look at would be the domain, all reals. This would tell me if I have any vertical asymptotes I need to worry about or anything like that. So this means I don't, so I'm skipping over it. Then I'm going to take a look at any kind of limits I'm given. Notice as x goes to minus infinity, uh, the function f of x, so there should be an f of x here, the function f of x goes to minus 3. So that means I actually have an uh, asymptote down here at minus 3. I'm going to do that in a different color. And I can say, okay, as my graph is coming out this way, or as x goes this way, my graph's going to be coming down towards this most likely. Because usually I think of asymptotes like magnets, they pull the graph that way. And then here, as x goes to positive infinity, the limit of f of x is 3. So limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is 3. So I have another asymptote at 3. Now with rational functions, you can only have one horizontal asymptote, but there are functions like the arctangent where you can have two. Now that doesn't mean this is arctangent, but... Again, this doesn't mean there's something wrong. So if I was to label these, I would say something like this is the line y equals 3, and this is the line y equals minus 3. I don't have to label those, but it's helpful. Okay, so again, the graph's probably going to be getting pulled towards this. Now I'm going to start looking at the sign charts and see if I can get some kind of shape for these. I'm going to change colors so I can see what I'm doing. So okay, so for f prime... This means that f, the graph of f, is increasing until we get to minus 1. Okay, so until we get to x equals minus 1, which is right here, the graph's increasing. So it's moving up towards that point. Now what else is going on? Until I get to minus 2, oh, that's before there. So when I get to minus 2, f is concave up. Okay, so until I get to x equals minus 2, I'm increasing and concave up, and I got this asymptote that's going to pull things. So I want to draw a graph that's going up and pulled towards this, going up, but it's also concave up. All right, so I'm going to try my best to do that up until I get to x equals minus 2. There, that does that, so it's concave up, it's increasing, and it's getting pulled towards the asymptote down here. All right, now it's supposed to keep increasing until I get to here, but then notice at minus 2, it's an inflection point, I change over to concave down. So it keeps increasing, but we switch over to a little more concave down. Well, not a little more. I mean, it is concave down, but I'm drawing it the best I can. It's not as dramatic as over here. Okay, now I'm at x equals minus 1. This is going to keep being concave down. So that's going to be easy. And until I get to 0 now, I'm going to be decreasing. Between minus 1 and 0, the function is decreasing. So concave down and decreasing is a nice, easy shape to draw. So maybe a little more curved would be nicer, a little more curved down, but it doesn't have to be that dramatic. Okay, now I'm at 0. Notice both of these are not defined. 
However, after zero, I end up switching over to concave up. And I continue decreasing. Now I keep decreasing till one, till x equals one, and I stay concave up till two. So I'm gonna just keep the graph going till I get to one, which x equals one is this point down here. And then see what I do. So till I get to one, it's decreasing and it's concave up. So that's gonna be a shape sort of like this. So sort of like that. So that's what I'm trying to draw here. Keep the graph going, so kind of like that. And so there shouldn't be too much of a curve right here at this point, but it keeps going like that. And then finally now, I'm at x equals 1. And notice that at x equals 2, I'm going to end up switching to concave down again. But after 1, I'm actually increasing. So for a while, it's going to remain concave up. But now I'm increasing, so concave up and increasing. That's not so hard. Oh, I missed my point. I'll just make my point bigger. Okay, and now I got to switch over because I'm at 2 to concave down. And notice I continue increasing. I continue increasing forever, but also I got this asymptote here. So it's going to keep going, but now it's concave down. It's going to get pulled by that asymptote. So I say, okay, concave down getting pulled by that asymptote. Something like that would make sense. Okay, and yeah, really this should be going through right about here, but my drawing's okay. And you'll be doing this electronically. It'll be a little bit easier, but on like an exam or something like that, I'll be looking for the overall shape. Now you may notice this ND here, this is telling me that it's not defined, the F prime is not defined. That means I'm either gonna have a point or I'm gonna have something like this where I go totally straight up for a minute on the function. So really here, if I was to draw this perfect, this would be even more of a straight line through the point zero because we're not defined there. And that's really what that's trying to tell us. So hopefully this is enough for you to have some guidance of how to approach these problems. It's really worth, even though if you're doing the online homework and you're just picking a graph, drawing them by hand first is a good skill to have, you know, for an exam or something like that. But also it's useful because then you, when you pick the graph, you can catch any little tiny thing you might have missed that's different between the multiple choice graphs.